Hello, hello, everybody. I have a question for you. Do you struggle to find time to exercise your dog or dogs and to get exercise for yourself? That's something that I really struggle with on a weekly basis. I wanted to talk to you guys today about exercise and things that you can do. Canine fitness where you can do it with your dog, save time, and have awesome fun, a great workout while you're doing it. And one of my favorite all-time ways to do this is a sport called Kenny Cross. That's what I'm going to be talking about today. And I'm really, I would love to know if some of you actually do it yourself. Um, I'm going to be talking a little bit about what it is, some of the equipment. I have some of the equipment here that I use. This is, a, a, I have a lot of people that ask me about this when I talk about it. They want to know what harness do I use? Where do I get my equipment? Um, some people, it's brand new. It's a brand new sport to them, Kenny Cross. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. Uh, a way that you can really be more efficient in your exercise, both for you and your dog. But before we start, if this is your first time here, I wanted to introduce myself. My name is Erica Bowling. I am the owner and founder of Northeast Canine Conditioning. I love helping people take their sport and working dogs and turning them into elite canine athletes. And I love helping people take their passion for dogs or really for anything and turning it into profit. So I like to do the fitness side of things and also look at it from the business side. So um, I just see some people are here with us already. Um, if you guys know, let me put up, if you know what Canny Cross is, um, if you do Canny Cross, I would love for you to mention it. Let me know. I'd love to hear your feedback. Um, if you don't know what it is, don't worry because I'm going to be introducing that today. Um, so I want to, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to jump right into it. So uh, Canny Cross, let me see. Anybody? If you guys are here, say hello. Come say hello and post a comment. I, I see the lurkers and people watching, but they don't, you guys don't always say hello. Um, so, okay. What is Canny Cross? Canny Cross, I don't even remember how I first learned about it. Canny Cross is much more popular in Europe than in the United States. Canny Cross is when you go running with your dog and they have races where people race with their dogs. And what's different from just like running with your dog with holding the leash on, you know, having your dog run on your side is um, it's set up where your dog is running in front of you and you have like a mushing harness on the dog and the dog is attached to you. So, um, hey, Catherine. Hey, Conchetta. Okay, um, Conchetta, one thing here. Let me put up the word one more time because if you guys, while you're listening, if you want to, let's see if I can get it. If you can do, hey, Susan, thanks for joining us. Here we go. C-A-N-I-C-R-O-S-S. -S. So if you just do a quick, you know, Google search, pull up a picture or a video, um, Put the sound down on that video so you can listen to me. Um, but if you want to do a quick uh, Google search, but Canny Cross, one of the things, yes, yeah, C-A-N-I-C-R-O-S-S. -S. Um, I'll keep it up there for a second. So what I like about, let me go back, let me backtrack. So I used to go running with one of my dogs, and um, I have I have herniated discs in my back. Actually, sometimes running makes me feel better. One of the things that I struggled with when I was running with my dog is holding the leash in my left hand and sometimes he'd be pulling me a little bit on my left side. And so what I found and it drove me crazy is when I'm running, like I, I was off, not off balance, but like my arms were not moving in equally because holding the leash and having him pulling me, my left side and my arm, my left arm was more tense. Okay. And, and I could feel it. Like it just would throw me off. Um, you know, he'd pull me to the side sometimes. My lower back um, would start to bother me. It was, um, I enjoyed it, but it, it just would get aggravating. Um, and to give you an idea, when I, I used to run marathons and I don't even like wearing a watch, like it, after running a few miles and it just, it just aggravates me. I don't like things, you know, pulling me, hanging on to that leash. And so with Canny Cross, what it is, is the dog has a harness. It's like a mushing, a mushing harness, like the sled dogs wear. And what happens is you wear a belt, but it's a special belt that goes around your waist and the harness attaches to the belt. And actually, I've got a few things here. So there's different types of belts, but it's what's different here is this is what they have really ones with thick padding. This one is kind of has thin padding, if you can see. But what what's different is the belt. And this is what's important. Hey, Jacqueline, thanks for joining us. Um, let us know if you do Canny Cross. 
But one of the things about the, the belt, it's not just any old belt. It's a belt that sits low on the hips, like low. So it's not, when the dog is pulling, it's not putting pressure on your lower back. It's almost like it's pulling you in the hips rather in the lower back. And what's also different, because I see people use these belts, it's very different, is this is, you guys know like climbing harnesses, like when people are rock climbing and stuff, but your leg goes through this. So the belt goes around your le your waist and your legs go through these holes so that it keeps the belt from sliding up your waist. So it keeps the belt low. And then what happens is it comes out in front of you and then what happens is this is where I'm gonna attach the dog's harness. And so what makes it different is it's a canny cross. Some people do ski drawing where they do this in the snow, but it's a harness. You need a dog harness and a human harness, but the harness sits low. It sits low on your hip. And I find that if you get a harness that doesn't have the little you know loops for your legs to go through, what happens is as you're running, the harness starts, you know, it goes up and up and up. And next thing you know, it's pulling on your lower back. So what happens is um, I actually Google and I'll tell you where I, I get some of my equipment. Let me pull it up here. Nonstop dog wear um, is where I got my harness. Um, I like uh, it's hard. It's hard to find some of this equipment, you guys, because like I said, these sports aren't super popular in the United States. Um, of course, like in Alaska, you'll see more people doing the snowbound, the snow type uh, sports, but nonstop dog wear. And another place where I got um, some of my equipment is Howling Dog Alaska. Howling Dog Alaska. And so what you want to look for is you want to look for a canny cross harness or you could actually, um, some of them use the same one for like that they use for ski drawing. S-K-I-J-O-R-I-N-G, ski drawing. So just remember, it's, and sometimes I see these in these kind of um, websites for like pet supplies, and you'll see where they have a, like a belt and the dog's attached to the belt. You don't just want any old belt, especially if you're running or, you know, jogging, is you want a belt that's going to sit lower than the waist, a candy cross belt, and you want it so that it has these loops that your legs go through so that it, like a rock climbing harness almost, so it doesn't go riding up. Um, then the other thing that's different, I got one here. The other thing that's different is, okay, the dog is attached to you and you, and you don't want just any old leash, uh, or, or, or rope attaching you. Um, so, so Jacqueline says, no, I, you run yourself, but sometimes the dog, yeah, holding the leash. I hate holding the leash. So here, here's another thing is what you want. You don't want just a typical leash a, a lead that attaches you to the dog you want to look for a lead um this is actually for let me put the word up here so you guys know how to spell it um it's called ski joring um i actually got my i got my lead my line from howling dog but um non-stop i had it uh, a few years ago but ski joring and the same leads you can get that you can use the same ones for when people are on skis and the dogs are attached to them um, or just, you know, you can go to the sites and look at the canny cross equipment. But let me show you, um, let me show you what's, what you need to pay attention to when you're working on these leads. So here's, here's the, the lead, okay? And it's like a nylon lead, but look, it's got a bungee part here. I don't know if you can tell, but it's got a bungee. And the whole thing's not bungee. So it has a part of the bungee and then it goes here into the regular lead. Okay, see, so this is really important because this bungee, like if your dog is stopping and then going and stopping and going, like that thrust, like, and that energy, like it could yank you off your feet. And so if you get the bungee here, that's part of the line, the bungee is gonna take some of that impact and it's gonna help relieve the back and it's gonna give you more control than having that just sudden when the dog just, like at a race, when people race and you're at a start, a start line, everybody's motionless and then they say, go. I mean, can you imagine your dog is like, you know, eight feet in front of you and just takes off? And can you imagine if you didn't have any kind of give and they just yanked you? Like you could get hurt and it could just yank you off your feet. So what you, you really wanna get the proper equipment. And this is, I can't remember how long this is, I'm thinking it might be, 
about eight feet or 12, eight to 12 feet, eight, and it's not 12. Um, but it was from Howling Dog. It's the ski joring. Again, let me pull that up. It's the Howling Dogs, the ski joring line that I got. And um, people, you'll get an attachment where you can have more than one dog attached to you. I just do it with one dog. I think it'd be, for me, for safety reasons, do it just with one dog. <laughs> um, so that is, hey, Kate, thanks for joining us. So, um, okay, so that's one of the things. So you need to, you need to get the harness. You need to get the harness for yourself and make sure you adjust it properly. It's not on your waist. It's low, 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 low around the hips, almost, almost like around your butt <laughs> pulling you forward. So if you feel it around your lower back, it's not properly fitting you and you, you it should not be aggravating through back pain. And not all of them, um, the more casual ones don't have the holes for the legs to go through. But I tell you, um, if it weren't for these holes for my legs to go through, it would go all the way up my back, okay? So the other thing that you need now is the proper harness. And let me show you, um, the harness that I got is from Nonstop Dogwear. And if you go to, if you're watching this from my business page, I actually put a picture of Knox wearing the harness. But the harness that I use from them is called a free motion harness. Um, and it's hard to really show you the harness unless it's on the dog. But um, the free motion harness, a couple things that are unique about it. First, the nonstop dog where we do have uh, a retailer, Cal Casey. He, um, he's, he's a distributor in the United States. But uh, it's actually, uh, it's a Scandinavian, com originally a Scandinavian company from Norway. And the thing that I like about the nonstop, the free motion harness is along the side of it, it has this, this padding. So it has the actual material and the padding that runs along the side of the dog's back. I know a lot of people are familiar with the X back, like the mushing harness that have the X and it crosses, the material crosses as an X over the dog's back. When I went to some online forums of, you know, when I was first starting this and I was asking them about harnesses, um, what people told me for candy cross and bike joint for some of those X backs harnesses, is it can put uh, additional pressure on that on the dog's back or you know because it's crossing over and so the non-stop harness it does have a piece of material on the side that crosses the back but it's not that's not where the pressure is it's just keeping it so it doesn't go too far down along the side but it actually has uh it has padding the dog's head goes in through the hole through the padding and the pressure is more going along the side. Um, I would say it's off the spine, it's higher up. But when I had people describing harnesses to use, um, that was one of the arguments they were making um, You know, for not using an, an X-back, doing the X-back is to relieve pressure off the back. Also, the fit of the harness is really, really important because if you don't have the harness fit correctly, um, you could have pressure points, you know, if it's not sitting properly on the on the chest of the dog, you could be choking the dog, it can affect the breathing. Um, if it's not fit properly over the back of the dog, it could be putting pressure on the spine. Um, shoulders, if it's not fitting properly, it can aggravate the shoulders. And so um, the best thing to do on the website, uh, you, I know most of these websites, I know nonstop dog wear on the website, um, they give you different recommendations and, um, Kale Casey, if you guys um, have questions about fitting the proper harness, I can put you in touch with the person who um, helps, uh, who distributes and brings these into the United States to sell. Um, but it is really important. And the thing also, some of these harnesses, some of these harnesses work better for some breeds than others. So I went onto different forums on Facebook and I described, you know, I have a Malinois. My Malinois is about 60 pounds. You know, some people who had different types of breeds they would say, oh, this harness works really well and that harness doesn't work well based on the structure of the dog. And that, of course, that can be impacted by the breed. So it's really, it's, it's not unusual to go through a couple different harnesses to find the correct one. Um, the best thing to do though is to talk to people who, who are experienced and who know the sport. And I used Facebook online forums, um, bike joring, candy cross forums to do this. Um, so does anybody, I'm looking here in the comments, does anybody do candy cross? I don't see anybody in here who's posted that they do it. Candy Cross. Nope, nope. Let me, uh, if you're just joining us, let me put the name up there right now if you want to Google it. 
So what do I like about it? Okay, well, I told you I like because it frees my hands, right? It frees my hands so that I'm running. And also what's awesome is the dog is attached to me and the dog is pulling me. And he might not pull the whole time, but like it, you'll run faster, <laughs> it's more efficient. Um, so it makes you faster runner. Um, so you feel really good about that. And um, and it's the partnership. It's really the partnership. And there's something I can't explain it. There's something about having there's something about having my dog pulling and running in front of me, attached to me, versus being next to me on a leash. Um, it's just a totally different feel. And I love that. Like. I love when he's, I went yesterday with him actually with Knox. And what I love about like, you know, you're running behind them as you're talking to them and like, oh, good boy. Oh, keep going. Like I can see his ears listening and turning back when I tell him to stop. Like he was stopping and he'd look over his shoulder back at me like, okay, can we go now, mom? And um, it was just, um, it's just a different feel. I don't know how to explain it. Um, and I know some of the people who've done it have, have they've shared with me that it's, it's, it's a different feel having the dog attached to your waist, having the harness and having them pulling you and also having them in front of you. Um, I, it's, yeah, I love it. I don't, I don't know how to explain it. And, and you don't have to run. I mean, you could go walking and jogging. Um, you can introduce it at a walk. Um, so there's a couple other things that I wanted. Oh, um, here's another thing, especially here in the, like in the winter time during hunting season, you, um, I go out on the trails and stuff and I make sure that I wear like a fluorescent, you know, the, the orange hunter orange. Um, so, you know, hunters, if people are, even if I'm in an area that they're not supposed to be hunting in, I don't want anybody accidentally shooting us. Um, if you go to an area and you're doing it at a time of year when there's hunting, um, I would recommend there are also um, vests that you can put on your dog with the, the orange and also wear a vest yourself. You want to really make your make yourself visible. Um, and you, you ideally you want to run on soft surfaces. Um, I go on trails, uh, dirt trails, dirt paths. Um, you don't want to be doing it on cement and pavement. Um, so those are some of the things. And also, I wanted to point out. And usually, people, um, yeah, safety. Conchetta mentioned about safety, and that's something I was going to talk about training and, and safety in just a second. Let me see if I missed any comments here. So um, so let me just pull up one more time in case nonstop. I'm a huge, huge, huge fan of the nonstop dog wear of their equipment. Um, you can find everything on their site. Um, but like I said, I also did use Howling Dog Alaska um, is where I got um, some of my equipment also. Um, yeah, uh, you know what? I just read Angie's comment. Let me, um, howling dog. Let me take this howling dog off for a minute. Um, Angie, have you done, have you done candy cross? Um, so you said there's something really special about watching your dog trot or run and being able to be a team. Yeah, it's, it's totally when you're out there exercising with your dog and you know, it's, it's, it's a real, it's a different type of bonding, um, than just doing like obedience training together. Um, when you, the two of you are actually out there pushing yourselves physically, um, and, and bonding and it's a different type of bonding. Um, you know, I've done all, I've done, you know, I've trained obedience, I've done search and rescue, I've done friendshiring, I do detection work and the, it's a different, at least for me, it's, it's just a different feel when I'm actually out there and I'm exercising and I'm doing it with my dog. Um, so, so the other thing I wanted to talk about is, um, so safety is an important issue. And let me tell you, uh, my you have to be be aware you don't ideally you don't want to go where there's loose dogs, right? Even if your dog is friendly, you don't want to be in an area where loose dogs can be coming running up. Um, I like to use um, park trails, um, county parks. Um, find sometimes if you go and find out where um, the mountain biker, like if there's some mountain bike trails, um, I like to go in the woods and what helps me, what I actually do is I use Google Earth sometimes. And what I was doing for Google Earth is I was looking at some of the local parks and the local county parks and the trail system. And sometimes I would go to Google Earth and Google Maps and I would kind of look at the view to see, um, you know, is this an area with a lot of neighborhoods around? Um, is it possibly, is there going to be possibly a busy school or, you know, I'm thinking about safety things because I have dogs that aren't necessarily the most social with other dogs. 
And I will say this, and this is one net negative, is when your dog is running and they're on the lead and, and your dog is, you know, like eight to 10 feet in front of you, if, if something happens or, you know, a loose dog comes running around the corner, uh, it's you don't have as much control if the dog is right next to you. And so I really do a lot of research to see where safe places are to take my dog. And um, I'll, I'll, if it's a popular park or trail system, I'll do research to find out when are there, when it, are there fewer people. So like in the springtime, I'm not going to go to the popular parks on the weekends when there's tons of people there. If it's a drizzly, misty, rainy, yucky day, like that's the perfect day to go out. It's cool outside and nobody's going to be outside. Um, so those are some things to think about safety is when your dog is right next to you, you have more control to immediately grab your leash, grab your dog. And um, you, you do lose a little bit of, of that control when the dog is far out in front of you. Now, what happens is when I'm training, because there's a couple of things you need to think about is when you first start, your dog's probably going to want to, the male dogs, right, might want to go and like pee on every bush, <laughs> sniff. They want to sniff by every tree. And when I first started training, what I did was I, I had the leash, you know, I had my my canny cross lead with the bungee attached to the harness. And then what I did was I had a long lead attached to a co their collar. And then I did run. I held that leash to the collar in my hand when I was training them so that if he went to go veer the wrong way, if he was sniffing trees, if he wanted to pee on everything, I'd be like, I'd give him a verbal correction. I'd be like, no. And I can grab the leash and give him a little correction or direction so that he understands because, because this is attached to the harness. So you don't have as much control if your dog's stopping and sniffing and peeing and pulling one way and another. You don't have as much control when they're on the harness. So when I'm training, I actually did have the collar on and I did have a lead and I did carry it, but it didn't take long for him to learn, you know, oh, I can't go sniff trees or, you know, and he learned pretty quickly if I pulled on the harness to the right or to the left, it would help direct him. But those are some things to think about. Also, um, whenever you're, yeah, Angie said um, safety for the human partner as well. Yeah, good shoes, good point. Good shoes, trail shoes, um, things like that, especially if you're running on trails and not on hard surfaces, um, sometimes having that extra support, right? So let me show you. I also have one more thing I wanted to show you here is I've mentioned this before. Um, this is a ball that I love using. It's a star mark. I'll pull that up for you so you can see the name. Actually, if you just Google, if you go star mark, when I Google it, I just Google green ball on a string. <laughs> um, so you can Google star mark green ball. If you go to Amazon, just say star mark green ball, but not all of them have a string on them. So if you listen to my show the other day, I talked about the importance of having a larger ball and a string on for safety reasons. So what do I, what does this have to do with Candy Cross? <laughs> Here's the thing, dogs don't always know to pull you when they're in the harness. Like, you have to teach your dog to run straight and to run forward, all right? And some dogs, when they feel the pressure on the harness, they're gonna, they're gonna wanna stop. Um, or, they, or they wanna stay next to you and they wanna look up at you, they go into the heel position. So, um, hi Shelly, thanks for joining us. <laughs> Um, you can catch the replay from the beginning, but we're, um, we're talking about training for Candy Cross. So the easiest way to teach your dog to run forward and to pull you with the harness is to have somebody in front of you, to either have another dog, somebody on a bicycle, have a person in front of you encouraging the dog to come forward. And so the dog will start to learn to, to run forward and to pull you and that the pressure on the harness is okay, that they're, that you do want them to pull on the harness. So my challenge was um, I do a lot of this by myself. I don't have anybody. Frequently, I have nobody to train with. So what I did was I would um, put a ball in the backyard and I my dog would see the ball and what he would do is he, he would pull to the ball and I would attach the harness. I'd have him attached to me. And what I would do is I would have him go to the ball and I would teach him the word stop. 
and I would, I would be stop and I would pull back. As soon as he stopped, then I would say, go, stop, go. So I would have him going and running to the ball because I didn't have somebody around me to help encourage him to go forward. And I knew that if he saw the ball, he would want the ball. So sometimes I would go to like a baseball field, a soccer field. I'd put the ball up. Now he wants to run to the ball. So I had to pull back and I would be like, okay, go, stop, go, stop, go, stop. And I would teach the stop command going towards the ball. So another thing, so your dog, you need to know, how, your dog needs to know when to stop, right? You need to control your dog. Um, another thing that I use is I use the word easy. So when he's trotting and I want him to walk, I lean back, I put pressure on the harness, I put resistance, I slow him down, and I say easy, and, you know, whatever word you want to use. But I would, um, I teach him stop, go, and easy, slow down and do a walk, or I use easy for walking. Um, so this is essential, it's also for the safety, right? Because your dog's like eight, 10 feet ahead of you. And um, if you see, it happened to me yesterday, um, a man walked around the trail and he was a little bit in the distance. And as soon as I saw him, I told my dog, cause he was coming towards us. So I told my dog stop and he stopped and he sat and then I walked up to my dog and then I grabbed him. One of the things that I like to do is he wears his, his collar, his leather collar. And I use a little tab and I let the tab just hang on his collar so that when somebody's coming around the corner, I put him in a sit, I walk up and I grab the leather tab on his collar. So I have control, I have more control. And it's short, so he doesn't trip on it. So for safety reasons, I do have a collar on him and I have a, a short leather tab that hangs on the collar. So like what happened yesterday, somebody's coming around the corner, he's eight to 10 feet in front of me, I say stop, sit, and I come up, walk next to him, I grab the tab, I grab his collar, the man walked by me and then we continued on our way. Um, so those are things to be thinking. Again, safety is really important. So um, so this is the ball that I, I referenced a lot. I just never had it with me. Um, and yeah, yeah, Catherine said a carrot stick in front like horses. Exactly. Like I said, it's, it's easy if you have somebody to help you, if you're with another dog. Oh my gosh, when there's another person running in front of us, Knox, like he pulls so hard, like he wants to race forward. Um, so sometimes that could be a negative because they're, they could be so motivated. Um, but if you're training by yourself, yeah, you need what's your carrot on a string? You need to teach your dog to go and pull in front of you, not to the side, not to be in a heel position to pull in front. Um, so I did this over Christmas break at my parents' house a couple years ago. And we just did a couple laps in the backyard running to his, to his ball and um, oh, what I also did was I put the balls on two, two ends of the yard. So we would go to one ball, I would stop and I would turn around and go to the other. And so um, I didn't, I kind of started to wean him off the ball or I'd hide it around the corner because, you know, eventually if the ball's not there, I want him to go forward. I did this for about a week. And when I went to the trail, like he, he was like a pro. He just ran ahead. He pulled me. Um, there was no ball in front of him and um, he just loved to run. And it, it for us, it transferred right over. Um, another thing that I use the, the ball for is when I was teaching right and left. So if you're going down a trail and the trail turns in different directions, right? Or you don't have a clear trail, you need to communicate to your dog to turn right or to turn left. Um, and I know some people, you know, you can do it like with a leash, you can do it like when you're uh, training horses to drive. But what I did was I had two balls that looked exactly the same. So two, two of these balls and my dog knows directionals. Like if I, if I point to something right or left, he knows to go. He just doesn't know it just by the word. So what I did was I would put the two balls. It was almost like a triangle. I was at the point of the triangle looking towards the two balls, one ball up to my right, one ball to my left. And the balls look exactly the same. They're the same ball. And what I would do, I use G and haw, G for right and haw for left. So I would say G and then I would kind of point to the right. And then at the minute he started to indicate to the right, I was like, yes, I rewarded and he ran to the ball. And then I would do the same thing for left. I would say haw. I would give the command, 
I would give a little indication, you know, point, do something to indicate the left. As soon as he turned his head to the left, as soon as he showed any kind of movement to the left, I said yes, and I rewarded him, and he ran to the ball, and the ball was his reward. And then eventually what happened, instead of pointing or helping, I would just say G or ha, and if he looked in the right direction and started to go in the right direction, committed to the correct position, I would reward him, and he would run to the ball for the reward. Now, if he started to go and take off in the wrong direction, my dog knows what the word no means. Um, and so as soon as he started to go in the wrong direction, I would say, no, leave it. So he can't reward himself with the ball. Or if you have a leash, don't let him go grab the ball. And, um, and that was how I, I taught. There's a lot of different ways you can teach right and left. Um, but for me, it worked well with the two balls because, um, he was already driven to go to the balls and we had already practiced go and stop to the balls. And um, it, it worked well for us. Um, and so literally what I do is I go to the park, I put two balls, one way to the, my right in front of me, one to my left. I stand, oh, here's another thing is I stand behind him. I stand behind him because I want to mimic what it looks like when we're running together. I stand um, right behind him and then I say, gee, and then if he looks in the right direction, he goes and he rewards himself. If I say G to the right and he looks the wrong way and he starts to go left with my dog, I can just say no. And he comes right back to me. He won't run to reward himself. Um, so so those are some of the things. That's, some of the challenges are I, I've known people that have struggled to have the dog run in, ahead of them and pull them. Um, the dogs like want to run next to them or want to jump and play on the leash or they want to keep looking up at the owner. Um, but that's what I used. If you don't have somebody is I use the ball. And then, like I said, there's a lot of, there's a lot of different ways you can teach right and left. Um, and if you're training by yourself, it can be a little more challenging. Um, but this worked well. And now make sure the balls are exactly the same because or whatever you're using for a reward, because if I had a yellow ball and a green ball, and I was teaching G and Haw, he might think that G means green and Haw means yellow. He might think that G means get the yellow ball and Haw means get the green ball. So um, so if you're gonna do this with where he's rewarding and going to an object, you want the objects to be exactly the same um, because you don't want them to start to associate the words instead of to the direction right and left, you don't want them to associate it with a different object. Um, so that was something uh, also, or if you have a carrot on a stick, <laughs> uh, but um, you just get creative and as you're, as you're working it out with the dog, let me see if there's any, um, so do, I'm still looking here. Nobody, anybody here do candy cross? I have a couple Facebook friends that do it, but I don't, I don't see anybody in here posting that they do, that they do candy cross. Mm, looking, looking, looking. No. Um. I do have a photo on my on the business page where um, I have the harness, but let me go, let me give you these resources again. And I also wanted to point out. Let me go. So, so the sport is called Candy Cross. So if you just Google it, um, I, look at some videos, look at um, pictures and videos, so you can see what it looks like if you've never seen it before. And one of the companies, you have to have the right kind of equipment and it has to fit properly. Um, Nonstop dog wear, again, it's a Norwegian company, but if you go, the we do have a US distributor and you can order them through the US um, on Amazon, but, and they also do have a US uh, website also. Um, so Nonstop dog wear, and then the, the harness that I use is free motion harness, is the harness that I like to use with my Malinois. Um, another company I've used for equipment is Howling Dog Alaska. And um, sometimes when you're looking for equipment, if you're looking for the, the human harness that you wear, um, you can use the equipment, the harness that they use for ski joring. Um, sometimes you will um, you will see some of the equipment. And that the ski joring actually is where the, the line that I use is actually a ski joring line that has the bungee. Again, remember, get the bungee. The bungee is really important to relieve pressure on your on your on your hips and your back. Um, let me see. We have any? I'm 
So, yep. Yeah, so it looks like I don't see anybody. Oh, another thing I wanted to mention is um, you don't, just because nobody else, if you don't know people who do this, it doesn't mean you can't do it. Um, I started on my own. I just did a lot of online research. Um, I started asking people online who do it. Uh, a lot of Europeans. Um, I was in Facebook groups. Uh, a lot of European people in Facebook groups that are not in the U.S. I joined a, a group in England and I asked a lot of questions and they were the ones who helped educate me on um, getting the equipment, what kind of harness and where to buy the harnesses. And so there's no reason why you can't go out and do it on your own. I trained Knox how to do it without having a dog running in front of us or a human encouraging him to go. And um, I eventually found that there is actually a club, a local club where they do have a, a few people, not a lot, but there are a few people around here that do um, do Candy Cross. So, you know, really you, you don't have, just because it's not like a huge sport, we do have races in the United States. Um, we do have organizations in the United States. And we do have people that race. We, uh, a friend of mine, uh, she represented the U.S. Um, over in Poland um, for the dryland mushing, uh, the, the world championships. So we do have Americans. We do have people involved in these types of um, these dog powered sports. Uh, and don't let that stop you. If this is, sounds like something that you might want to try and, you know, message me, message me, do some searching. I'm happy to help point you in the right direction. You can message me on Facebook. Um, also, my business page is Northeast Canine Conditioning. And I also did want to mention that if you're interested, um, some of you are here, you actually do my certification program, but through Northeast Canine Conditioning, I offer the Certified Canine Athlete Specialist. Um, I have a, a program that teaches you how to design fitness programs for your dogs, um, how to keep them healthy, how to detect early signs of soreness, um, potential lameness, how to prevent injury, and um, how to build something like Candy Cross into a well-rounded fitness program um, to just make our dogs fitter, uh, help prevent injuries, and help them reach peak performance. So if that's something that you're interested in, uh, I did put a link on the business page with this video um, in the replay. I'll put it up in the description part. So if you're watching the replay, look at the description. I'll have a link to the actual certificate to the brochure. Um, but I did want to mention that if some of you are interested in learning more about the fitness side of things. Um, so, yeah, Shelly, try it. Definitely try it. And, and like I said, just because nobody else is doing it that you, I mean, you know me, right? I'm doing it. And there, there are people that you can connect with virtually. Um, but just because you don't have anybody down the street to do it with, um, it doesn't mean you can't do it. Um, just make sure, do it in a safe space because, like I said, you're not going to have full control when the dog's right next to you. And for as you're training it, I would go ahead and hook, hook a leash to your dog's collar, get like a 12-foot line, and just have it so that if, if somebody comes around the corner, you need to quickly get your dog while you're teaching your dog and you don't want your dog sniffing all the trees, you have more control that way. And then you can wean yourself, um, wean yourself off of that extra leash, but it's really helpful for training. And um, I know that um, people struggle with dogs sniffing everything. You guys, you set the rule. You set the pace. If you don't want your dog sniffing, you don't let your dog sniff. You know. And if your dog's going no, and you know you you pull them away, you know do a light correction, whatever. But um, you control that. If you don't want your dog, there's no reason why a dog should be going out sniffing all the trees and, you know, stopping to pee every two feet. Um, and you need to set that. You need to make it clear to your dog at the very beginning. No, we're not doing this right now. But you also have to read your dog because sometimes when they get moving and, you know, it does get a bowel movement. And, you know, what, a couple times like Knox had to hurry up and like stop and go to the bathroom. And I'm like, no, no. But. Like he had to go to the bathroom and then I felt bad. So you're gonna, you gotta learn to read your dog to know does he really need to stop or is he just being ornery and wanting to pull to the side. Um, but I would, uh, when you're first starting out, I would attach a collar and I would have something there just so for that extra security as you're training. Um, another thing, <laughs> let me, I'll tell you this story. Another thing is <laughs> Knox loves water, he, he, he loves to swim. And one time I was on a trail and the trail went alongside a pond. And I tell you, he's only about 60 pounds, but when he's running and pulling, he's strong. 
And so he saw that pond and he just took off to go and like, he like would have pulled me into the pond because I'm attached to him. And also that's another thing is having a quick release. Um, I, I use the carabiner. Let me see if I can find it. Some of these, you know, what happens is you'll have, you can have an extra attachment or have like a quick release, like an emergency release. Um, those are also things to think about. Um, but uh, do be aware. Um, also things to be aware of is like, if you have deer that we actually um, ran by a deer, Knox didn't see it. There was a deer that ran by us yesterday. Some people have a lot of problems when there's rabbits and squirrels and cats around. Um, so you just, you just have to be aware. And again, that's where the bungee comes in. If they start to take off and run after a, a cat <laughs> or a rabbit, the bungee is going to keep the dog from pulling you off your feet or hopefully um, but make sure you get the, the bungee with some of that release because these things, you know, these things do happen. So ideally scout around and make sure you do it in a safe location, ideally where there's no, um, distractions, there's no other dogs, no loose dogs. And, um, also I go out in by myself out in the middle of the woods. Ideally it would be good if you're out by yourself, um, to let people know where you're going because I mean, you can imagine if your dog's like chasing a rabbit and you're tripping and you fall or twist your ankle. Um, you know, I run miles, like I'll, I'll, I might go three, four or five miles. So, you know, I could be three, four miles out. And if I twisted my ankle, um, you know, have your phone with you. If you do it by, you know, by yourself, think of safety things. Um, because you just never know, but you know, carry, uh, a, 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 you know, uh, again, you want to have, the right kind of coloring, make sure you don't have hunters shooting at you <laughs> um, and carry your phone with you. And if you're out by, by yourself, let people know that you're out there. Um, I, I had a, a friend who um, she was actually um, out in the snow and she she got her foot um, stuck. Uh, she was just hiking and she got her she, she was able to pull out. But her foot, she was hiking in the snow and her foot and her boot got caught um, between two rocks. And um, she was quite a distance from home and you know it was cold it was freezing out it was snow snowy weather um and she you know she she was able to get herself free um got her foot uh out of the boot was able to get the boot out but you know you do have to think about that kind of stuff and especially i mean not to scare you but if you're out by yourself um just take precautions carry your cell phone let people know if you're out by yourself um th those are some things that i keep in the back of my mind when i'm out by myself um so <laughs> Conchetta said, how did I, how did I get Knox to stop running to the pond? I was screaming, no, no. <laughs> and I was yelling at him to sit. And what I did was I grabbed the leash that was attached to us and I grabbed it in front of the, I keep the bungee end closer to me. And what I did was I grabbed it in front of the bungee and I pulled all my weight. I grabbed the leash. I pulled the harness and I was yelling no. And I yelled for him to sit. Um, <laughs> if he was like a 90 pound dog, I, but, um, but yeah, <laughs> I just, I, I mean, I weigh a lot more than him, but I just used my body weight. I leaned back. Um, I gave a verbal correction. No. Uh, and then I also gave him a command, um, to, to sit. I could have said stop, but his sit command is much more solid. Um, he, he uses the sit command a lot more than the stop command. So I told him sit, um, and I was able to avoid him dragging me into the pond. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, it was, I think it was like 40 degrees outside. Um, so it would not have been good if I was in the pond that day. <laughs> I would not have been happy. Um, and um, another thing is a bike joring where you do a similar thing and you attach the dog in front of you to a bike. So that's, a, you know, has, has its own challenges. That's our next step. So um, any questions, you guys? Let me just pull this up again. Um, the Certified Canine Athlete Specialist uh, is a cer certification program I have. If you want to learn more about canine fitness, uh, I am doing enrollment. Um, right, I do ongoing enrollment right now. If you guys want to know more, let me know. Um, my business page, Northeast Canine Conditioning. If you go and if you watch this video in Northeast Canine Conditioning on my business page, I have a photo of Knox um, wearing his harness. You can see what the harness looks like on him. And um, also reach out to me if you're watching this on YouTube. If you do the replay on YouTube, LinkedIn, uh, or any other place, um, again, you can just Google me. You'll find me and message me anytime, Erica Bowling. 
um, from Northeast Canine Conditioning. Um, if you have any questions, if you need help, you're not sure about um, how to select the right size, um, I can point you in the right direction of people um, who sell equipment and who can help make sure you um, know how to go about getting the right fit for your dog. Very, very important for that. Um, so I think I covered everything. So if there's no no questions, oh, if you guys give it a try, let me know how it goes. Um, let us know how it goes. Definitely, I've been thinking about maybe playing around and trying to get a local group together to do to do it more of it. Um, but if you give it a try, let me know. If you're watching this and you do Candy Cross, I would love to have you share with people and post your experience, what you think about it, and any other tips that you might have for doing it, doing it safely. Um, or training tips. There's a million different ways you can teach right and left and gee haw, stop and go. Um, and there's a, a lot of different uh, training approaches. So I'd love to hear if people have other ideas. Um, and if you're watching the replay, you guys, if any of this is interesting to you, um, if you learn something new you think is helpful, feel free to pass this along. Um, this is, if, if you're a runner, this is a wonderful, wonderful way um, to just do more with your dog. And even if you're running with your dog already, um, give it a try when your dog's in front of you. And like I said, you'll run faster. <laughs> you get to run faster when your dog's helping you. You're, you're more efficient in running faster. Um, you know, there, there, there's a lot of ways. And then I also have friends, even if you're not a runner, it doesn't mean you can't do it. Um, when we're getting, like, I haven't been doing this in a while because of just my schedule. And we did a lot of like, jog walk jog walk jog walk so there's no reason why you can't get out there and do walking with your dog have your dog pulling um you have to condition don't just go out and have your dog pull you for a half hour when you've never done it before you want to condition your dog for it but there's no reason why you can't do it and have your dog go walking with you um and it adds a little bit of extra strength training if they're pulling you and who knows you might get a little motivated to add a little jog in there every now and then. <laughs> um, that's the best way to start. Just do some walking, a little bit of jogging, walking, a little jogging. Next thing you know, you'll be up to a mile, two miles, three miles, and uh, and then you're getting more fit. So, um, all right, you guys. Thank you again so much. Uh, I'm going to log off. I want to remind you that I am here on my Facebook, Northeast Canine Conditioning, my Facebook business page, every Friday, 8.30 p.m. Eastern time. So if you wanna catch me live, come join me live. Um, if you're watching the replay, I'd still love to hear from you. I do read the comments after the live show and share it, share it along with others. And I, again, I'd love to hear from you if, uh, if you do this or if you give it a try. And uh, if you wanna know more about the Elite Canine Athlete Program, um, if you want to know more about how to become a certified canine athlete specialist, um, message me. And also, if you're watching a replay in the description, I'm going to have a link for the brochure so you can download the brochure to get more information. So, all right, I'm signing off. Thank you again so much. I hope to see you next Friday, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time, live on my business Facebook page. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye for now.